Hello everyone, it's Jason from Skinny Research and Development. Today, we're going to talk about LEDs. Last week, we took a look at the output of the 555 timer and how we can manipulate that output to get what we want, whether we uh, sync or source the, uh, the output or we use it to drive some other circuit. But when we were talking about that, I kind of talked about uh, using LEDs and how you know you can stack them together and you can add a resistor to limit the current. And I realized maybe not a lot of people know about uh, LEDs or might just want a beginner primer on it. So today we're going to talk about LEDs. Let's get going. The first thing that you really want to know when messing around with LEDs, it's not entirely necessary, uh, but it does help you a lot. Try to find the data sheets for your LEDs. If you buy your LEDs online, you'll see the technical specs there, or you'll see some data sheets, because there's two pieces of information that you want from those data sheets. You're gonna to wanna to find out the forward current and the forward voltage for those LEDs. So let's take a look at that. So the LEDs that I'm using uh, for my project are white LEDs. Two things that you wanna look for, forward voltage, so that's down here. And uh, the forward voltage for this particular uh, LED is 3.2 volts. The next thing that you want to take a look at is the current associated with that uh, forward voltage, the forward current, and it is uh, 20 uh, milliamps. Now, this also gives you maximum ratings, which tells you, you know, hey, don't go above this. So uh, the forward current for this one, the maximum rating is uh, 25 milliamps. You're not going to want to set up the LED so that it's drawing more than 25 milliamps, but uh, you do want to try to set it up with the characteristics uh, that we've got circled here. So how do you do that? What does that look like? So let's take and break out some, uh, break out a grocery bag and I'll show you. So when you're using an LED, there's kind of a typical circuit that you always see. Uh, first, you're always going to see kind of your, your voltage source. The voltage source that we're going to be messing with is uh, 9 volts. The next thing we're going to have is the LED itself. Then we're going to have a resistor to control the current. And lastly, we're going to connect all that to ground. Okay, so first the question is what exactly is the forward voltage? Right. The forward voltage that they're referring to in the data sheet is the voltage that's dropping across the LED. So from this point, to this point, they're letting you know how much voltage that LED is going to drop. So no matter what uh, voltage is up here for the source, what they're telling you is that in this case we're going to have 3.2 volts they are going to drop across this LED. That is the forward voltage. Uh, different LEDs have different forward voltages. You'll see them down as far as 1.8 volts. You can see them really high. So what the data sheet is also saying though is when 3.2 volts are dropped across this LED, this LED is going to light up. So we'll write this down. Okay, the next thing we want to know is how or where does this forward current come in? What is that all about? Well, what the forward current is, is how much current can be pulled through this LED in order for it to operate at uh, peak performance. So what they're saying is the forward current for this LED should be somewhere around 20 milliamps. And the way you set that forward current is by manipulating this resistor down here. See, the trick is, as you adjust this resistor, the current through this LED changes. If you were just to have a straight wire, then the current from this source to ground would be, it would be, uh, it would be a lot, just put it that way. Uh, you would end up actually burning up this LED very quickly. And so you put a resistor in there and you start to step it up. Is 10 ohms enough? Is 100 ohms enough? Is 1,000 ohms enough? And trying to restrict the amount of current flow. In this case, they tell us you need to restrict it so that we have at least uh, 20 milliamps going through uh, the LED. So how do you do that? Well, there's a nice formula to help you pull that off. The resistor that you want is equal to the voltage source minus the forward voltage divided by forward current. So in this case, in order to get R, you're going to have 9 volts minus 3.2 volts over 20 milliamps. That's going to give us a resistance of 290 ohm. If we throw us a resistance, maybe a little bit higher if we want to set it at uh, than 290 ohms, but uh, 290 ohms right there, 
And what we get is we're going to have our 3.2 volt uh, voltage drop across the LED anyway because that's what it drops. And then we will create a current pull through it of 20 milliamps. So that's cool, but let's say we wanted to stack multiple LEDs in there. What's the best way to go about doing it? Well, it kind of depends on what setup you want. So let's try this again. So the question is, what happens now, right? Okay, because now we've got two branches and we put these two in parallel. So what occurs? Well, there's not much difference. Uh, we have a voltage source up here. When you make a parallel circuit with this voltage source, you're going to have 9 volts dropping across this branch and this branch. That means that this is going to drop 3.2 volts and this is going to drop 3.2 volts. This resistor set up as a 290 ohm uh, resistor is still going to be pulling our 20 milliamps down this. But now we've got one over here as well that's pulling 20 milliamps. So what happens in this case is the overall current coming from this source, that overall current doubles. Because uh, when you're looking at current and you hit something that branches like this and you've not changed anything, uh, then you're going to have to have 20 milliamps pulled this way and 20 milliamps pulled this way. And so overall you're pulling twice as much current out of your source, which means that your source isn't going to last as long. So as you start to stack these uh, one after the other, just know that, yeah, you don't have to change uh, the voltage source, but th the problem that you're going to run into is you're pulling more and more current. Now if we do it a slightly different way, in this case it's going to kind of change uh, what's going to happen here. So let's say we leave our 200 and 90 ohm resistor here and we take these two uh, LEDs and we stack them in, in series. Well what's going to happen is we're going to have 3.2 volts drop over this, 3.2 volts drop over this, and then there's not a lot of voltage left for this resistor, right? And consequently um, we're not going to be pulling as much current through. These LEDs are actually going to look weaker, all right? We're not going to have as much luminescence. And so now we have to really kind of redo this and change this value of R in order to be pulling enough current for both of these uh, to light up enough. And so you start to see that, yeah, there are some times when you can uh, use this method and, you know, get the same amount of uh, light and you're going to be drawing a good bit of current for that. You can try it this way, but there's always a trade-off. So if we decide to do it this way, we're essentially going to be changing our resistor to be able to get the same amount of luminescence. If we keep the 290 ohms here, uh, we're not going to be able to pull near as much current as we need. So what we need is we need 20 milliamps. So how we would go about doing this is that we try this formula again. We're going to want that resistance to equal our voltage source minus our forward voltage, but we've got two components here with a forward voltage of you know, 3.2 volts. So really we're going to be subtracting 6.4 volts this time divided by our uh, 20 milliamps current that we're trying to get. And what we're going to end up with is a resistance of 130 ohms. All right, so we have to drop this resistance in order to kind of maintain the same amount of luminescence in order to get this to to light up. So let's take a look at some of that on the actual circuit board. Set up the circuit here. I have a power feed coming in. It's going to the positive leg of this LED. The positive leg is the uh, longer leg. So you, when you bring uh, power in, always feed it to that longer leg. Then I have current flowing through the LED. And then we have three, uh, there are three resistors that I put after it. Um, really, I only need one resistor, a, a 290 ohm resistor. I do not have a 290 ohm resistor. I have three 100 ohm resistors, so this is 300 ohms. It's close enough. And uh, that is uh, powering on my LED. Uh, so we have about 20 milliamps of current going through it. It's going to be a little less than 20 milliamps because we have just a little more resistance there to uh, hamper that current flow. So something I find interesting is that these resistors are really controlling the current. In this setup I have 300 ohms worth of resistance, uh, 20 milliamps is being pulled through the LED. Uh, but what happens if I introduce another LED? Well one of the things that should happen is when I put this in parallel, 
is that the current's going to be split, right? I'm going to have 10 milliamps going one way and 10 milliamps going the, the other. Because there's no more current that's going to be pulled. This, these resistors are determining how much current's being, going to be pulled. And the forward voltage is going to be the same for both because I'm going to put these two LEDs in parallel with each other. But what we should see is that because 10 milliamps go, will go through this LED and 10 will go through that, um, we're going to see a drop in the amount of light that's being put out by these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little shadow here with a, a piece of paper. And that way, maybe you'll be able to see the change in luminescence when I hook this up. So here's one, and then I push it in. And you see a little bit of brightness change. So what we're effectively doing is, is splitting the current, which means something fairly interesting. It means that we don't actually need 20 milliamps of current going through the LED in order for it to light up. What it means is that that's just kind of how it operates best. It doesn't mean it doesn't operate at all if there's less than 20 milliamps, which brings us to a bit of an interesting problem. With my project here, there are a few people that would contend that this shouldn't work because on paper it doesn't make a lot of sense. I'll show you what I mean. I have a stage in the project that I'm working on right now that looks a bit like this. So there are a couple things that are interesting about this. One, there are three LEDs. Each one of these LEDs has a forward voltage of 3.2 volts. 0.2 volts times three LEDs, that's 9.6 volts, okay? It's more than what I'm uh, getting from my source. Another thing that you'll notice, there's no resistor, nothing here. All right, my 555 timer, it's coming here, it's turning this uh, base on of this transistor allowing these LEDs to see ground every once in a while because we have a nice little square wave out of it and this is, we learned about this from our last video. So these LEDs are turning off and on uh, but there's nothing really here to control the current and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people who probably really know what they're doing who uh, get mad at me for that because I don't have anything to uh, to limit it. So how is this working? To answer this, we go back to the data sheet. So what I've done is I've set up something here that most people will tell you is something you never want to set up an LED for. I have no current control on the LED. There's no resistor. All I've done is I've taken the resistor I have put it in line with a current meter here so you can see what kind of current's being pulled on it. From the ammeter, from this current meter, it flows uh, into the LED and then from the LED, the, LED, the other side of the LED goes to ground. So really it's just a voltage source right across the LED. And what I have here is our data sheet. Now on the data sheet there's this nice little graph called forward current versus forward voltage. This kind of gives us a curve that says if you feed this LED a certain amount of voltage, what you will see is it will start to conduct a certain amount of current. Usually the way people think about LEDs is they think of them like a diode. That uh, what happens is that if this diode, uh, when it reaches a certain voltage, it allows current to flow. In a normal diode that might be like 0.7 volts and then the current starts to flow uh, and I think that what it is is this actually a, a, an on and off condition like you're going along here and then as soon as it hits 0.7 volts boom all the current starts to flow well kind of in an LED what they're showing you is this jump it's actually shaped more like this so what happens is as you go along and the voltage starts to increase you notice that the current just doesn't automatically start flowing all of a sudden. What happens is the current gradually starts to flow. So let's see what that looks like on the LED itself. The graph really steps in somewhere around 2.9 volts. Uh, so as I bump it up here to 2.9, oh, got it there. It's telling me that the current that I'm drawing is somewhere around 8.5 uh, milliamps. And if I look here at 2.9, Eight says that yeah I should be drawing about that about eight nine milliamps okay maybe a little bit less as I pick this up I get to 3.2 I'm at 3.2 now and you'll see that I've got 19 milliamps showing on my multimeter if I've got exactly a 3.2 volt source then the LED is only going to allow 20 milliamps to pull through 
So that's that's great news, right? So we don't even need, really need, a resistor there, all right? Or we don't really need a resistor there to control the current when all we have is 3.2 volts coming from the source. It's only gonna allow 20 milliamps to pass. Now where we get in trouble is that when we get a, above 3.2, right, you're gonna notice that this curve goes up, all right? And we start hitting 50 milliamps, we start getting higher and higher, and that's gonna cause this LED to get a little unstable, it's gonna draw more and more current, and then it's gonna burn up. And that's why we use resistor. If this thing goes up to nine volts, you can see it, that just goes off the chart. It would be pulling, uh, it would be allowing a ton of current to be pulled through. However, when we use the formulas we were talking about earlier, okay, it allows us to pick a resistor that nails that current down to 20 milliamps. So back to the question, how does this work? The reason this works is because I'm not running this project at the best efficiency. Okay, these little LEDs aren't putting out near what they could. At a very minimum, there's three volts being uh, dropped across each one of these LEDs. At three volts, the only amount of current that's uh, allowed to be pulled according to, the, according to the data sheet is 10 milliamps. I'm really operating this at a suboptimal state. However, it is working and it gives me the output that I want. So hopefully that gives you some insight on how LEDs work. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.